In our previous videos, we made progress from manual string handling to create HTML to leveraging on the powerful Shinsha template engine to create more scalable and robust templates to provide better HTML documents. The only issue we were having is that we were just hard coding the HTML template inside our Flask view. We were basically combining Python code with HTML code. The Python part in our Flask application will usually deal with business logic. It will not have to deal with presentation. We should separate business logic from, se from presentation. So what we're going to do is move the template code to another place. Basically, we will store it in an independent file that is going to be easier for us to develop and also for any other designer that we have. And we will reference that HTML file from inside our Flask function. Let's take a look. In this example, we're going to use our fourth application, the one containing on 04 template outside view module. But I want you first to compare it with the one in our previous example. In this case, we have our entire template contained in the Python function just as a big string. In this case, what we're going to have is we will take out all this code to a different file. In this case, it's called index.html and we will just reference this template file from our Python function. There are a few things to understand here. The first thing is that the template function that we were calling now has changed. We are not using anymore the one named render template string, but we're using one that is called just render template. We are then referencing render template and we're passing the name of the template that we want to render. This name by default is a file that will live inside the template directory. This is by default something from Flask. We can of course change that, but we, we like this convention, so we follow it. So inside the templates directory, you have an index.html file that basically contains the, the HTML document that we want to use as a placeholder for our document. So in this case, the only difference just to showcase that they are actually different is that we are just changing the color or, of our entire document to red. So I'm just going to reload this page and you will see how this is all red as it's specified right here. So again, this is super simple. We just moved the HTML code to a different file. We have chosen a good name for it and inside our Python function, whenever we want to invoke that HTML document or template, we're just referencing it by name. The important part here again is by it's to use the correct name for our directory. In this case, it's the templates directory. If you follow the example in our GitHub repository, it will be already done for you and you can just take a look at how it works. Finally, all the features that we have talked about up to this point are from the Shinsha template engine. They are not actually from Flask. Flask is using the Shinsha template engine engine. If you ever have an issue, it will likely be related to Shinsha and not to Flux. So that's a good idea to check the documentation of the Shinsha template engine, especially the one that says template designer documentation, that it's a way to, that it's the way we have to create HTML templates. In this case, for example, we have the documentation for the for loop and we will see that there are different control flow structures like the if statement and others. Up to this point, we have seen how to create simple web applications returning HTML uh, by constructing that HTML from templates and combining it with our data. We're going to now start digging into more advanced Python and Flask features and the next one is going to be routing to create different routes for our application.